Um, the lab is, is sort of organized chaos. There are about 35 or 40 people in it, graduate students, um, postdoctoral fellows, technicians, support staff, etc. cetera. Um, we have probably an unusually broad um, research program. Uh, we focus in three major areas. We work on the biology of small RNAs. We work on um, cancer biology, usually with the focus on the roles of small RNAs in cancer and, and ways in which we can use small RNAs as a tool to understand cancer. And then we have sort of a third area, which is um, technology development and genomics, and mostly making use of some new generation sequencing technologies um, to try to understand everything from the evolution of cancer to human evolution. Well, our RNA interference actually now describes a, a fairly broad range of biological phenomena. Um, the notion is that RNA has a sequence just like DNA does, and that sequence can be used to recognize complementary RNAs um, that share sort of the the inverse of that sequence, the mirror image of that sequence, if you want to think about it that way. And through that recognition, uh, a lot of, of jobs can be done. The RNAs that are recognized can be destroyed, they can be taken to different places in the cell, or they can even guide um, processes as strange as uh, taking pieces out of the genome, depending on order, what organism you're talking about. So one of the, the sort of evolutionarily deepest rooted roles of RNAi is as a, a genome defense. It's a way that plants, for example, recognize and fight viruses. Uh, it's a way that animals recognize uh, parasitic pieces of DNA within their own genomes called transposons and shut those off. It's also a way that the cell um, uses RNA to program the regulation of its own genes. And we can exploit any one of these responses, essentially tricking the RNAi machinery into sh silencing any gene that we want, um, just by fooling the machinery into recognizing it as, in essence, one of these foreign elements. And we can use that for a number of purposes. The one that we mainly use it for is for trying to understand the biology of those genes. Um, and again, in our case, mostly trying to understand um, what different sets of genes do in tumor development. Well, we've done a number of experiments in mice to, to try to figure out really what RNAi does in, in animals, and I can give you a couple of examples. So um, one is we've looked at the um, small RNAs that the cell makes in order to regulate its own genes and compared um, the spectrum of those small RNAs in normal cells versus tumor cells. In one of the first cases that we did this was in a tumor type called B-cell lymphoma. And by making that comparison, we discovered that there were a set of microRNAs, which are what these um, endogenous um, small RNAs are called, that differed between the normal cells and the tumor cells. And it turns out that, that uh, the, the locus, the, the gene which encodes those microRNAs, is often amplified in that specific tumor type. And if we reproduce that event, adding extra copies of those microRNA genes, we actually accelerate the development um, of that particular tumor in mice. The, an, another way that we approach this problem is by taking um, all of the components of the RNAi machinery, all the proteins that actually bind to the set of small RNAs and the, the small RNAs program to do these regulatory events, and delete them from the genome and essentially ask what the consequences are. And it was in part those experiments that led us to the realization that RNAi in animals plays this sort of genome defensive role, protecting um, the DNA of germ cells from the ravages of these mobile genetic elements called transposons.